Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast for Timer Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Thursday, May 25th, 2023. And our top story today, how solitude can be good and even important for your mental health. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Dr. Tweedy Nguyen. She's an assistant professor at Durham University. Tweedy, it's great to see you. Thanks much for joining us on the program this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, so a lot of people, you know, we lived through the pandemic and mm -hmm. that was considered to be very isolating and mm -hmm. quarantining and keeping people away from each other. But I think you, you, you talk about isolation and not isolation, but solitude as really something different, something that we actually need to improve our mental health. Yeah, so the pandemic actually um, create a pretty unique experience of solitude, I would say. So that's actually very different from the kind of solitude that I usually study. Because when you think about the time people spend in lockdown, they spend in an extended period of time. Some of them don't even know when they can get out of it. So we tend to think of that as more of an enforced kind of solitude. Whereas the kind of solitude that I study, um, usually the way I study it is just put people in a room for a very brief period of time. Uh, and we, we tell participants that this is going to be very short. Um, so definitely that we haven't really had people experience that they felt forced into it. Um, there are different degree of how much people like the experience, of course, but with such a short amount of time, the, the unique uh, effects that we found was that the people arousal level, so any kind of emotion that people describe as excitement or even anxiety. Um, so anything we think of as rousing emotion, um, they just kind of dropped after people spend like a short amount of time. And we're talking about 15 minutes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so solitude is actually a can be a good thing. And, 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 you know, we've had a show earlier on this week about mental health and teenagers and, you know, teenagers using social media. And I'm sure you've discussed that amongst your peers, but very differently, solitude can actually help you, I guess, recharge and, and collect your thoughts. And that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah, so at least when we see that in such a short period of time, uh, if that is the effect that we observe, so one thing we can draw from that is that if you have a very, you know, busy day with a lot of things going on, solitude can create that opportunity for us to kind of just, like you said, hit the reset button and kind of just refresh and recharge. Um, and in fact, there have been studied in the past that show that adolescents, when they go through the day with multiple social interactions uh, back to back, with a brief uh, period of solitude in between that can help improve their mood for the next social interaction. Yeah. And I, I'm just trying to think about myself and collecting my thoughts. And, and we all, I mean, you live in it, we live in it, it, a lot of things coming at us. Sometimes if you take a step back, you can actually be more productive. Uh, and, and I wonder if that's the case with any age range. Is it people in the middle age, like myself, older, younger, does, does the same approach apply? Solitude can help you collect your thoughts and actually be more productive. So the, the part about being more productive is right now, it's just a hypothesis. So there has, been, has not been any work that directly tests uh, that. But um, in terms of the relaxation and collecting our thoughts, we have seen that in younger adults. So usually that was done in um, the context of when younger adults go on um, camp, you know, like or experience with camp or retreat, then they describe the experience of time where they're on their own, usually time where they their devices are taken away. Um, <laughs> then they um, feel the experience as an opportunity, it can be scary for some of them. It can be pretty chaotic because during that time, th thoughts can come up. Um, but a lot of them come out of that, that finding the, the experience very rewarding. For adults and older adults, um, older adults actually pretty, um, they have built the capacity for solitude very well uh, compared to any other age groups. So because of that, then the experience might be 
losing some of that novelty, but still, it can still be a calming and reflective kind of experience. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, you know, Tweety, we did a show last week that said that some of the campsites now have access to the internet. So I'm not sure how much that halo, that that dome of silence is going to exist. But, you know, in in all seriousness, is there any anxiety? You mentioned having the phones taken away or put away. I'm not sure people are actually forcibly taking them, but because there's no access, you put them away. What about the fear of anxiety when you come back? I know if I've gone on vacation and I come back, I'm thinking about the whole time, I'm thinking about how big my inbox is going to be. What about that level of anxiety? Does that, how does that relate to solitude? I think that can actually um, become intrusive to our solitude time. Cause I think that, um, well, people describe solitude as either physical experience of being removed from other people, but some people actually consider their solitude to be some an experience where they mentally detach. They actually able to, they, they find, they say that um, solitude is a time that I have to find myself being able to re be removed from social stress, anything that going on in my life. And because of that, actually uh, people, some people might find that it's the best time for them to be alone is to go into nature where they can remove themselves away from all of the thoughts about, you know, your inbox filling up and stuff like that. So I do think that if we go into solitude with a lot of the worries and stress that we still carry into solitude, you know, from our daily life, then it might take away some of the benefits that we can gain from solitude. Um, but of course, it's it's pretty normal. So if people do experience that, I wouldn't say that we sh we sh should beat ourselves up over it. It's it's pretty natural. Um, when when we sit alone, thoughts gonna come up, and some of it can be negative thoughts. And um, and that's why you know there's a separate literature on mindfulness and how some people might also choose time and solitude to practice mindfulness and meditation as well. So yeah. Uh, Tweedy, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about finding mindfulness and the importance of solitude in your overall mental health. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you got to start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're going to change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repaired for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. 
Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report, so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Dr. Twee V. Nguyen. She's an assistant professor at Durham University. Twee V, thanks so much for sticking with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Yeah, thank you. And I actually had some time during the, uh, during the commercial break to find uh, some solitude, and uh, I feel really recharged. Uh, Twee V, uh, what are some tips? Um, say you're in a relationship and you have a partner. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be difficult because... You've got the collective, the, the partners together, the family, but then mm -hmm. you may need to find as an individual the time for solitude and the time for reflection and the mindfulness you were talking about. How do you, how do you balance the, that, that partnership with the individualness and solitude? Yeah, it's very interesting you mentioned that because right now we're actually doing a study where we ask people questions about exactly that. Do you negotiate do you engage in conversation with people in your life like your family your spouses or your partner um to to find time for yourself and in 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 our study we actually also study new mother because that time is when you know busy with the baby and some do mm -hmm. you actually negotiate the time with your partner to do some you know help out a little bit so you can find that time um and at least from a few interviews that I have looked at, it doesn't look like people actually engage actively to negotiate that. Generally, they kind of just take themselves away um, to find a few minutes. Sometimes maybe there might be family members who actively offer the help, offer the time, like, you know, maybe I can take some of the loads away and you can have some time on your own, do your have some me time, do something that you enjoy, uh, that sort of things. Um, but yeah, so I find the balance and the negotiation probably gonna be challenging for some people uh, more than others. Um, but, you know, on the other side, you find people that live alone that might have to find a balance in the opposite direction. They need to reach out so that they can also have their social life and um, the activities that they engage throughout the day and then resort back to their home space to find time uh, on their own. Um, so yeah, so I think a balance, balance is a good word to describe that. We need a balance between both. Um, generally, we still pretty much, you know, we can agree that we're pretty much pretty social um, and social interaction, social connections are good for us. Um, and I think the solitude just come into that to kind of allow us the space to take a little break away from that. So at least from my research, I definitely am not advocating for the fact that, you know, you should always just find more and more time for solitude and more is better. So I wouldn't argue that, but it's just that we have our social life, we have a busy, active life. Solitude offer a little bit of break from that so that we can recharge and come back. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and in terms of the environment, how do you create a good environment for solitude? You mentioned going out into the wilderness, well, not the wilderness, going on a going on a hike, maybe going camping. Yeah. But can you can you find that some people live in urban areas? They live in New York City, they live in London. Uh, can you find solitude in a big city like a London or New York City? It's going to be quite hard. So that's when the tricky part is that actually in urban place, um, the kind of solitude experience that people often describe is more psychological. Because, um, you know, uh, I, I, so if you on a London tube or um, on the subway in New York City, uh, people can put on the headphone, pick up a book, create that bubble around themselves. So of course, there's one study that showed that people sometimes, because, um, uh, you know, there are researchers that um, do research on talking to strangers sometimes can be beneficial. But, you know, so I don't definitely do not say that don't engage in 
spontaneous social interaction. If that's something that people want to do, definitely do that. But of course, in busy urban life, people do create that bubble so that they can find that space for themselves. Um, but of course, um, one very big element that we find in terms of creative environment for solitude is the element of safety. So when we are alone, um, it's easy to find relaxation and easier to recharge when we feel safe. So either in urban area or in nature, like people go into the wilderness, the, the element of safety is even more important because there's real risk, physical risk of like, you know, falling or in the United States, you can run into wild animals. Uh, we don't yeah. have that in the UK, <laughs> but yeah. So, <laughs> so the element of safety is very important when you want to create that mo that environment to find solitude. Yeah. Uh, uh, last question, Tweedy. Uh, what's the follow up to this research? How do you how do you build upon what you have already learned um, and what you've hypothesized? What do you what do you test next? So I can think of um, two direction of my research that I want to go into. Um, one is actually find the unique life circumstances where we see that solitude can definitely benefit. So earlier, I talked about how now we're studying um, new mother because we see that new mother busy with the baby. Uh, with a lot of things going on, how do new mothers can find that space? So there are other life circumstances, for example, people who just retired. That's also the group that we are uh, studying because usually retirees, they kind of just find themselves with a lot of time alone and now they need to fill that time. So, so that's one direction that I move into is to kind of zoom into different life lived experience and explore what does solitude feel for them and how we can improve that experience? And another direction is that I'm, I'm kind of um, want to see how, cause you know, we are people, but we also, and like we, we're part of the, the animals group. And um, how do we, solitude, when we talk about recharge, we use that word, but it kind of be, it's a part of our, regulatory process. So how do we, can we actually um, study some of the biological or physiological markers of stress, of anxiety, um, and whether or not we actually see evidence of solitude also influence those markers because that can have implications for health. Um, so not just well-being, but physical health as well. Because I can imagine how someone, you know, you can see both sides of someone who has a very busy life and never get the time to recharge. How is that going to have implications for their health? And then someone who has lots of time in solitude and the lack of stimulation, how that also has implication for health. So, um, yeah, so that's the two, looking at both the societal impact and also the biological marker so that we can understand the effect of solitude on health and well-being. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really interesting. And I'm, I'm particularly interested in the, uh, it's all interesting, but I'm very particular when you get the research, we'll talk again about retirement and what that means. Cause so many people we're living longer, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in the US, and what that all means. So we're going to leave it there. Tweedy, always a pleasure. Great to see you. Thanks so much for sharing your research. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a nice talk. Yeah. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, somebody you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more, all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, the Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? We'll visit our website and of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRNAM. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic 
on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Tax audits, tax liens, wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The Tax Relief Line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. The Tax Relief Line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free. 